I'll be giving facts, outs, and concepts. And uh, as in science, with that, understand and analyze and integrate the concepts that uh, we already have to generate new knowledge from that. Yep, talking about real science. <laughs> Since I love to ponder about the universe and how it works, I've decided to, that the flash news of today would be the Big Bang Theory is wrong. Wrong and proven. Yes, wrong and proven. First, because it violates cause and effect. The theory, it's uh, the most patched up theory, you know, in the history of science, and essentially it's full of ad hoc fallacies. Well, some of us have certainly heard of the theory or of relativity and how it's hard to understand. Uh, well, at least it seems so. Like in my part, I think that to understand about the fundamentals of the Big Bang, actually, yeah, uh, it is essential that you understand Einstein's very proven theory of relativity, contrary to the Big Bang theory, I might say. And I think that in certain cases, as in people's perception of reality, it is it is made to appear confusing. You know, you know the theory is made to to appear confusing intentionally. Like for example, in many articles and books, uh, that they put you know explanative sentences, actually more likely a dictating dictating sentences. They give you very confusing sentences with more than two strings of sub of subtle direction that is not directly concluded at the end of the sentence well talking about some lack of clarity in language rules wow <laughs> okay here we go with the flash news I'm going to read some passages of some papers and stuff but just for the exercise factor of it I won't be references referencing any sources or names my source here is just reason and reality to validate what I'm saying As human beings, due to our experience of reality, we take for granted that our perception of the world dire directly reflects the basic structure of reality. It seems that it is hard to bridge this gap between our natural experience of existence and the realism of relativistic physics, but it's only a matter of conception. The current situation is quite like remaining intellectually stuck in a flat world while having access to the mathematics of round world navigation as for instance you had mathematical descriptions to account for the different times of sunrise around the world and yet still had no concept of the of a spherical world in effect the mathematics would work but you would consider the whole thing paradoxical yeah and that's my it's an essential point here people hear of relativity and all but they have no mental or conceptual you know idea to think on and uh, because of that they they fall into you know a cognitive void and they're like oh my this stuff is just for nerds or something but no way no any conscious person capable of realizing say I am I'm me or or capable or in, of introspection can understand anything in existence including physics. Okay, now let's take a look on the nature of existence. I suggest that we start out with nothing whatsoever, a universe totally empty of everything that exists. Is space an absolute thing, existing even without matter in it, or does it depend upon the existence of matter to give it meaning? Let us define substance broadly as anything which exists, whether it takes the form of matter, energy, or other. In order to answer the question of whether space itself exists in the sense of having substance of any kind, we need to introduce some additional useful properties of substance. 
Okay, let our starting universe remain empty of everything except a single infinitesimal stationary particle. Now imagine the same particle in motion. How fast is it going? And in what direction? There is nothing for it to move relative to, and nothing to provide orientation. All directions are equivalent, and all distances are equivalent. The only way it can be otherwise is if space itself has a sort of structure to it, a framework to provide meaning to orientation and scale and motion. However, we have postulated an empty universe in it. There is no matter, no energy, and no substance of any kind except the single particle. How can there be structure without substance? In the real universe, there is a frame of reference to provide meaning to distance and direction. The reference frame is provided both by the presence of distant matter in the universe as well as by seas of rapidly moving agents such as photons, photons, and neutrinos. You know, the essential point is that the reference frame is provided by the presence of substance in the universe. I would not insist that matter is needed, is needed. But I take it as self-evident that some sort of substance is required, or there can be no reference frame in space. In the absence of other substance in the universe, our lone particle would be incapable of motion. For motion could have, for motion could have no meaning. Furthermore, and this is something to note, the size of the universe would be indeterminate, even if our lone particle has finite dimensions. Indeed, it is impossible to say whether the particle has infinite dimensions, finite dimensions, or infinitesimal without size, since there is no scale to measure by. The number of such particles which can fit into the universe around it is infinite in any case. Our known particle would even be incapable of spin. If it had parts, they might move relative to one another, but uh, a uniform spherical lone particle cannot spin about any axis because there is nothing outside the particle to spin relative to. By extension, the particle could not be be made to exhibit the properties of spin, such as centrifugal force, you know, a tendency to hurl objects off itself due to spin, nor could it tend to flatten from very rapid spin. The origin of these inertial forces surely rooted in the substance which defines the framework of space. Without a framework, without substance, except for the particle, without agents to produce forces, surely there could be no meaning to nor consequences of spinning. The idea that the presence of distant matter in the universe is the origin of initial inertial forces is known as the Max Principle. Our example may start to seem a little less hypothetical if we postulate a finite limit to all of the substance in the real universe, with nothing beyond. Uh, the Big Bang theory, in its simplest form, is such a case in which all substance remains inside a sphere whose surface consists of photons, photons moving outward at the speed of light since the instant of the original explosion. Under this assumption, the entire substance of the universe would be like our single particle, and all remarks about its size or motion in a larger infinity of space and time would be fully applicable. That is, they would be indeterminate. Now let us imagine a second particle just like the first at, at another location, not touching. Now, for the first time, we have, we have scale in our universe and can measure uh, the dimensions of the particles themselves as a fraction of the distance between them. There is no such thing as absolute length in this universe. We cannot tell if the two particles are close together or far apart. Their separation is indeterminate relative to the universe beyond. 